What's up creatives, welcome to the Tiffy Show. Today I'm going to talk about what to do after your wedding. It's done, but you still have stuff to do. So let's get to it. You're married, it's over, or you're getting married and you're just really preparing for this situation. I am going to let you know what you need to do directly after your wedding. You know, get it out of the way, get it done. Let's talk about this first though, which is the post-wedding blues, which is no one tells you or prepares you for this. The day after your wedding or a few days after your wedding, it's kind of going to hit you like, I don't have to plan a wedding anymore. My wedding is over, it's done. And there's this like weird sadness feeling and you're so happy that you're married. It was the best day ever, but you're a little bit sad because the best day ever is over and so is the wedding planning. For probably a year, maybe even more, you've had a second job and that second job is wedding planning. So I just wanna let you know that it's completely normal to have like a kind of post-wedding blues feeling and it will go away and you will be back to normal and you'll have so many things to look forward to, but you have to get through that first. So yes, you are going to have nightmares that you still have vendors to pay or that wedding planning to do, or you're gonna think you have wedding planning to do, but you don't. It's over, it's done. And just relish the fact that you did it, you had a great wedding. You're gonna wanna do your wedding seven more times, but just know post-wedding blues doesn't last forever. You're gonna kind of feel like it does. It's gonna be a little bit, if you're a woman, like PMS a little bit like, what is going on with my feelings? But you'll be fine. After your wedding, take your dress, your dirty dress that you walked around and his suit that he sweated out or both y'all's dresses or whatever and go get them cleaned. A few days later is fine. The same week is ideal. Just because the longer stains set, the longer they set in there, the harder to get out. So the fresher the stains, the easier to get out. If you want a budget for this, my dress costs $350 to get cleaned, yikes. And that's to get clean, and it's because it's a dress, they have to go through each like layer and hand clean it. And if you wanna get it preserved, that's more expensive, but I did a lot of research online, don't really see the point in getting it preserved versus cleaned. If you clean it and store it properly, you don't really need to get it preserved. And once you get a dress preserved, you can't really rewear it. They put it in these chemicals and stuff to preserve the dress like it's a relic. So you can't rewear it, you can't resell it, you can't give it away. It's it's not something you can, you know, dance around in or have another wedding in. So I say just get it cleaned and then get an acid-free box with acid-free tissue paper. You can get it at the container store. I found that was the cheapest option, but they do have some on Amazon that I can link down below if I find them. And put your dress in that, put it under the bed. Don't think about it for a year. Maybe sell it, maybe donate it. I don't know, but make sure you get it clean so you have some options. And the same with his tux. My husband got his tux cleaned at the same place that I got my dress cleaned and it was about $75 for them to do the entire tux. My, was it $35? Whatever, it was cheaper than my dress. Grab your IDs, get them, pick them up, walk with your partner to the bank or drive to the bank or wherever you need to go and cash all of those checks and put that money in the bank so that you can just make sure no checks bounce, okay? Everybody coming to your wedding, they might not, you know, you don't want any checks to bounce because you waited three months to cash Aunt Susie's check. So just cash them as soon as possible. You're gonna wanna go to the bank with your partner, have your IDs ready so that you can show them. And I wouldn't sign anything, don't sign anything, or if people left it blank, Take it to the bank and just make sure you show them and figure out how you want to do it there. I know that you could probably write in your name in those blank checks, but I just was like, bank teller, help me. And they figured it all out. And I did have to show my ID and my husband had to show his ID because some checks were made out to me, some were made out to him, some were made out to both of us, some were blank. So just a bank teller will get you situated and do not worry, you will get your money. So just go together with your IDs. Do that as soon as possible so that no checks bounce and so that you don't lose any checks. Going today to get our marriage license. Yay! Yep. So that's what we're going to do today. And yeah. drop off your marriage license. Uh, I'm in California, so you have, I think, about 10 days to drop off your marriage license. And in fact, now that I've done the whole process of getting married, I kind of suggest to, if you don't wanna do this whole process because it is a little different to get your marriage license in California than it was a few years ago, uh, just because certain things are closed, I would just go get married at the courthouse and then do your wedding. 
You just get all your paperwork done. It's done right there in person. You don't have to worry about anyone forgetting to sign anything or you messing up the paperwork yourself. And it's just taken care of and then just have your wedding. But if having a specific date is very important to you on your license, on your certificate, then just make sure that you drop all that paperwork off within a week before your wedding, after your wedding. I think it's 10 days, but let's just say a week to be safe and drop it off get it taken care of and order two to three copies, probably don't need that much, but order two copies so that you can start the name changing process if that's something you wanna do. I don't plan on doing that just yet, just because everything's a little bit delayed, but I got my copies and I did get my certificate. If you don't do that within time, you have to do the whole process over again. And for me, it was a drive to the OC, which is an hour out, not something I wanna do again. So I just made sure to take care of all of that straight away after my wedding and I just made a day trip out of it. If you love your vendors, leave them reviews. The fresher your wedding is on your mind, the more excited you'll be to leave them a review. They'll be happy to get the review. Honestly, a review sometimes is just more important to them than a tip or anything that you gave them the wedding day. They want the review because a review allows them to continue to do weddings and to continue to make money. Um, I would say, yeah, just get those reviews out. If they're a vendor that's not on the main sites, just ask them, hey, do you want a testimonial for your website? Let me know, be happy to do one for you, just anything like that. But thank your vendors, let them know that you appreciate their work if they're done with your work. Obviously, if they're a photographer and they haven't sent you your photos yet, or a videographer that hasn't done your video yet, you don't need to leave them a review. But once you have that and you're happy with it, definitely leave them a review ASAP. Write your thank you notes. I didn't know this, I guess I thought about it, but I was like, meh. You know what, as you get gifts, as you get money, as you get gifts, just write the thank you notes. <laughs> just do them. When you get a gift, just be like, I'm gonna write this person a thank you note. Order thank you notes online. You don't have to do a thank you note with your picture. That's really cute. But if you just wanna get this out of the way, just order some thank you notes. And then as you get gifts through the wedding process, write the thank you note mail it. There's no rules that the thank you note has to go out after the wedding. I did not know that. I never thought about that. So I did mine in bulk after the wedding, but do it within, I would say two to three months. That's just because older people just, they'd be waiting for those thank you notes. You know what I mean? I don't think everyone cares or minds if they wouldn't get a thank you note, but it's just the polite thing to do. You want to thank them for being at your wedding and celebrating your marriage. And regardless if they gave you a gift or didn't give you a gift, you need to give them a thank you because they took time out to celebrate you. So make sure you get those thank you notes done and out of the way after the wedding. And it's kind of fun. Make sure you do them by hand to just write messages because it kind of like, you get to relive the memories and just be very grateful and have a lot of gratitude for these people that love you in your life. If you are planning a honeymoon, start planning your honeymoon. Some people go to the honeymoon right after the wedding. I didn't do that. I don't know a lot of people that do that as much but it's still something that's done. And if you do that, great, because you did it, you organized a honeymoon on top of organizing a wedding, and I don't know how you did it, but A plus. If you are planning a honeymoon further out from your wedding, just make sure you get on top of that and you do it, set the dates, get the plane ticket, even if you don't have the hotels or anything, because a number one regret I hear a lot of couples say when they push out their honeymoon, when it's not directly after their wedding, is they don't do it. Costs get in the way, life gets in the way, I understand that. But just make sure if a honeymoon is important to you and you really wanna do one, just make it happen. Plan it, get the tickets, figure it out later, I don't care. Just make sure the honeymoon happens so that you know you don't feel like later, man, we were always supposed to go to Fiji or we were always supposed to go here, but we didn't because life got in the way. Like, Just make sure you plan your honeymoon ASAP after the wedding and it gives you something exciting to do and you're back in that planning mode because you just got off of the biggest planning of your life and you're not, now you're planning a honeymoon, yeah! Last but not least, plan a date night as soon as you're married. Have your first date night that you are a married couple. You who are husband and wife, husband and husband, wife and wife, partners. Just do it, it's exciting, it gives you something to plan, it gives you something to celebrate. You can get over those post-wedding blues ASAP, super fast, and just have a night, you two, and start that tradition where you're like, you know what, we're gonna have a date night at least once a month. Just start the trend, start that in your life as a married couple as soon as possible, and then you always have something to look forward to every month. And if you do it more than that, great, but at least every month. That way you start a tradition early on that becomes a habit, and what a great habit to have. Then a date night every month at fun new places. 
That is all I have to say in regards to what to do right after your wedding. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you share it, like, subscribe, and comment. Comment below. Let me know any tips I missed that you must do after your wedding, and I will see you next time. Stay creative. Am I getting it? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done.